Welcome to my make or break for horror genre. Today is all things paranormal activity. We're going to talk about the new one, Next of Kin, which is number seven in the franchise. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons about this movie. Um, there's been a very big mixed opinion on this movie. It's been out for four days now as of filming. So firstly, let me just point out, I read so many comments about this movie and everyone has these, you know, so many different opinions on this movie. First of all, you have to like the other paranormal activities to enjoy this one. Like, I just want to make this clear from the comments I'm seeing online. Like, people are like, oh, the first six were awful. Then why the fuck are you watching the seventh one? If you didn't like six movies, don't you think it's time to not watch the next one? Like, where is the logic for that person? But that was just one comment that, that I had to get off my chest because that was really annoying. But if you like, like, Fast and Furious is awful. Like, I don't care if anyone loves it. Like, in my opinion, all franchise, I just don't understand, like, I just don't understand what's so big about it. There's nine, and there's there's meant to be eleven. Like I'm gonna watch eleven of them. Like, no, it's not it's not happening. But that is off topic. On to horror. Um, next of kin. Originally, the original storyline of this is fantastic. Uh, it is about the woman who goes with her boyfriend. They want to film a documentary, of course, on the camera. That is the typical way they film the paranormal activity films as homemade movies or documentaries, and. She wants to go and visit her long lost mother and then, uh, you know, other family and relatives that she's never met before. Very old feel to it in terms of, I don't know what that was, we'll ignore that fucking hand gesture, that was weird. But they have a very cool feeling to it where it's like old farms, old cabins, it's nothing but snow in. But the pros and cons for this for this movie is, you know, we'll go to cons first. There's too, there's too many from what people are throwing around you have to watch the other six and like the franchise to then want to watch this one. I've already said this, but I'm saying, like, people are commenting on things like, oh, awful, um, I've only seen one and three. There's four more other movies. Watch the other four, and then you might enjoy it a little bit more. And then you get people who are like, oh, it's too, like, unrealistic. Well, I'm not being funny. It's a, it's a demon film. Do you know what happened? Do you want real footage? I don't know what these people want from, from me or the movie industry. I don't know. You have to understand is for the cons of this movie, I get it, no film in the world is perfect. So there are cons, like for example, I think some of the way they the way they film certain scenes could be done a little bit better. Um, just to get the extra scare factor in though, it's not to do with the storyline or anything. I think the storyline is actually really, really well written for this movie, which might be um an unpopular opinion, I'm not sure. This movie's very new, it's only been out for a few days, so there's still opinions being thrown around all over the internet. I need to stop doing this, Andres, it's just doing nothing for anyone, really. But yeah, no, it's it was it was a weird one when I read all these comments. I read most comments before watching the movie, and it's not like there's any spoilers, because in most paranormal activities, it's someone dies, or, you know, and this will involve spoilers, by the way, so, you know, if you if you're going to watch it and you haven't, probably best to not watch the rest of this video but the one thing that instantly i'll go straight to the end of this movie as well from what we know at the moment the boyfriend and girlfriend the main two couple who went to the town have survived they got away but then the ending scene was really interesting with it was like some super kind of demon he had the he was making a baby cry and then the police officer got close to him and it was obviously him and he has like the ability to without touching you or doing anything to make you for example, he made two police officers get the gun and shoot themselves in the head, which I thought was a cool concept. And then he takes the police car, he drives off. It's the end of the movie, but he goes in the same direction that the couple went. So whether that will lead on to another movie and the same storyline, who knows? It's it's done by a re this movie's done by a really really good director as well. The cast is really good. And for me, the the main con that these aren't. I'm by the way, I'm not necessarily going into my cons and pros. It's kind of like taking other people's opinions and kind of. Not debunking them or anything, just like, I want to go into their opinions with my opinions. So, for example, the main thing I've seen is, this movie isn't linked to the other six. Or the other five, because Ghost Dimensions... Well, no, Ghost Dimensions was, but wasn't. So, okay, we'll just say the other six, okay? A lot of people saying, it's no good because it's not connected to the other six. This doesn't need to be connected at all to the other six. In fact, I love the fact that it's not. There's only... There's always a saying in the franchise where people always will say, there's only so many movies you can do. So, or same with the TV series, like, there's only so much you can do, for example, with The Walking Dead. Fa like, I love the show, but thank God it's their last season. Like, there's only so much you can do before it gets very repetitive for the fans. There is only so much you can do with the storyline of Katie and her family. There is only so much you can do with that. And 
another unpopular opinion, but I really enjoyed, especially the five movies, including Katie in it. I think the marked ones was really good. I enjoyed all, like, the first five paranormals I really enjoyed. I think my least favourite is definitely number six, Ghost Dimensions. I think I think it was good. I enjoyed this whole franchise and I like, always loved the concept of paranormal activity. But I do think Ghost Dimensions was a little bit of a let down. I just think, maybe it's just me and my personal preference, but I felt like it being around Christmas time, it didn't really feel that of a scary movie. There wasn't too many jumpy, scary parts. Whereas this movie, you know, I went into this movie next of kin thinking, oh, it might be pretty bad because the last one was a let down and there's so many negative comments about this movie. This one has had well more jump scares um, than the sixth one, Ghost Dimensions. And this one has a much better storyline than the sixth one. The sixth one for me is definitely the worst paranormal activity. Um, but what I like about this is it, it, it doesn't lead to the uh, original five movies. It doesn't need to. Like, why does it? Look at Scream. I've already done an episode on Scream. This next screen will have, I'm just using this as an example, but this will have the original cast, but then they'll either be killed off or that's the end of them. And then there's a new franchise of Scream for the new and upcoming generations. Because, you know, Scream's 25, 26 year uh, franchise, maybe even 27 years now. So you've got to move it along to the newer generations at some point. You can't just wait for it to get stale and then die. So I really hope they do that with Paranoid Activity. I think that's what they tried doing in Fast and Furious, but for me, it's not working, like, for, as I explained earlier. But yeah, for me... I think this could be a whole new franchise of paranormal activity for a new storyline somewhere different as well. It's not all just in the suburbs and a house in America, do you know what I mean? In California somewhere or somewhere like that. This is a complete different concept. And this one's exciting as well. It's not just like a boring, they go there to visit in a documentary. Uh, they, they're, they're documenting their life of meeting their long lost family, which is a cool concept. But the fact that it's in a town where there's nothing around, it's just barns, farms, nothing but snow constantly all day every day uh it's dark most of the time uh it's it's yeah the concept of this one was really really cool and i think they've done a really really good job of it now what I, out of 10 what would i give it probably like a honestly like if i'm being generous probably like an eight um eight 8.5 everyone has a different preference because there'll be people that rate this movie like one out of ten i really enjoyed paranormal activity next of kill i thought it was really really good for me, I would definitely recommend it. Anyone watching this video or anyone who is a horror fan or is watching this <clears throat> this series on YouTube or is just, yeah, just, I'd definitely suggest to watch it. But I would suggest to watch it after you've seen the first six. And don't let the sixth one make you not watch this one. But, yeah, that's, that's definitely my opinion on the comments and stuff. In terms of the actual movie, brilliant. Really enjoyed it. It's actually a big, big shame it wasn't in cinema. I think that would have been amazing to watch in cinema. I think that would have made a lot of money in cinema because, yes, if the last movie doesn't do great, fine. But as any movie does when it gets big, if the first, if some movies take, a few, people don't even know, but movies take a few weeks, sometimes even a couple of months to get big in the um, screen. As everyone knows now, the front, I'm going to keep coming back to Scream because it's so similar in terms of this, but huge franchise now. Like every horror fan knows about Scream. They don't necessarily like it, but they know about it. Scream didn't do, wasn't really spoken about for three, until, until three and a half weeks after its release. That's They were literally four days off of a month without anyone really talking about it. Then it started gaining momentum, and now look at it. So I think that's kind of similar to this. I think everyone would have been like, oh, it's shit. I think a few people would have gone to watch it anyway recommended it and then it would have been flooded in over the next month or so so i think it's a big shame that this didn't come to cinema in the uk anyway i'm pretty sure it only went streaming um, services in america also and also for any other horror fan if you're really really into a lot of horror movies there's a movie called the visit which is um you can it's not a similar storyline really well it kind of is because that's about her going to visit her their, the two kids visit their grandparents that they've never met before but the twist is it turns out they were never the grandparents and they were all possessed and stuff by demons so that was a really cool film and there's like bits of that movie you can take from that into this paranormal activity it's like they mix for me i've got the feel of the visit and then a mix of the old paranormal activities which is just like such a cool mix like you can't ask for really better than that and in terms of jump scares like in a movie it's kind of hard to, to actually create real jump scares and the thing with a paranormal activity franchise you know what's coming you know you know how they they, they're very smart. They, they move the camera back forth very quickly because you're their POV. You're, you know, you can see what they can see. So when they're doing that, that's what they see. So you feel like you are that person. So it's it's really creative how they do it in every of the movies. I'll give them that. Uh, creating a jump scare is not an easy thing to do in a horror movie. For example, I went to cinema towards The Conjuring, uh, the third one, the, the Devil Made Me Do It, I believe is the title. I watched that obviously when I first came out months ago. 
for me, there was like one jump scare in the whole movie. If I watched the Paranormal Activity next to Kingdom Cinema, I actually would have shit myself. Like this movie was scary. I watched it at home and I was actually jumping in my bedroom. So it was it was a really good film. Um, I would highly recommend it. And I, I, I love the aspect, the storyline. Like I love everything they show in this movie. Don't get me wrong. I would admit the first like 15, 20 minutes, it was a little bit slow. Like it does get off a little bit of a slow start. After 20 minutes, I was like, wow, is this even going to be like, is this going to be how bad? Like as as bad as everyone else is saying, but you know what? It wasn't. I gave the whole movie a shot. Of course, you can't just leave a movie halfway through. You have to give it a go. It is so like it was a very good paranormal activity film. For, you know, this is the whole point about make or break. We it's it's make or break with these franchises. We need good movies coming out. For me, the reason I would actually count this as a as kind of a little bit as a break for horror and not a good one is because. This could have done very well in cinema, I believe. I truly believe it. This would have done very well in cinema. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sure, I'm sure the fact that it's... I've already seen the numbers today. Wow, millions of people have streamed this movie already, which is great because it's only been out for four days. But I feel like they would have done very, very... Like, there would have been a lot more build-up and hype to it if it was coming to cinema. So I think, I think that's a little bit of a shame. And that's the whole point of this Make or Break series is what we need. When, when you know, this is about a, a horror fan here and me seeing it from out, outside perspective where I feel like the franchise is just dying slowly. Like, I've, and if you know, if you want me to go into a little bit more detail about that, um, click my other episodes, episode one, two, this is episode three of Make or Break. I've got this, this is a series officially on my YouTube channel now, because obviously I want to do more content than just football, I want to do horror stuff and, and things like that. So yeah, um, for me, the franchise is slowly dying, but then this year we've gained a little bit of hope with the movies and the franchises coming back. So I can't complain. I watched Halloween Kills as well. I watched that in cinema, but I also watched that streaming when that first other came out. Great movie. I don't think I quite done a review on it. I've done a preview of that movie. But Halloween Kills is brilliant. Paranormal Activity Next to Kin is brilliant. I'm really hoping the new Scream is uh, fantastic. Everyone's saying um, Last Night in Soho looks really good as well. So you've got all these horror films coming out that everyone's talking about. And thank God, like we need this. Th th this is a slow build up. We're not gonna get straight to the point of having classics that we will talk about in 20, 30 years. We're not going to get to that point just yet. But this is a great start. This is a slow build up to that. This is the whole point of Make or Break for Horror. Us as horror fans, obviously we come together anyway. We're a big community. We need to, we always say our opinions. We don't necessarily agree with them, but we still, at the end of the day, all have the same, we all share the same love, which is the horror, fran like, you know, horror franchises, horror genre, horror movies. Um, so honestly, highly recommend it. From a horror fan to another, I highly recommend this movie. My next Make or Break episode will be coming out in a week or two. Um, I'm trying to do, probably a week, I'm trying to do one weekly because um, it is a series, so I want to be quite consistent at it. But of course, I've got to talk about the newer topics first. Um, I'm going to get them all out of the way and talk about them and then talk about reviewing the movie as well because, of course, I'm going to watch all these movies. And then I'm going to go back to old stuff as well because I want to talk about originals as well. Originals is huge for me, as some of you may know if you've ever seen any of my other two episodes. But yeah, this is a new series, of course, on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is episode three. I'm going to stick out this hopefully once a week, maybe even more than that. I want to be more consistent here. I love doing content on horror movies. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you can for more content like this. I'll be back with more content this week. But I'll be back with more, another episode of Make or Break for Horror next week. See you guys soon.